Hello and welcome back to the One Take Live cast. I know I have got a new hat courtesy of Attic T shirts, our guest we had last time. Anyway, as I said, hello there, welcome back to the One Take Live cast. I am Jax, your host, and joining me tonight, who I'm going to invite on here, is Mr. Will Crudson, an accomplished uh, guitarist, writer, musician who has played with bands such as Rachel Stamp, as well as solo work, and has done some work with Alka Mc... McLaren, Tom Jones, the list goes on. Recently, I saw this uh, fellow at uh, Adamant at the Retro Festival about two weekends ago, and he was lovely. So I'm just going to invite him now on the chat, and we talk about his career. Wait for him to accept. Hello. Good evening. How are you doing? I'm good. You can hear me all right, sir? Yeah, yeah. Very loud, actually. Hang on. Right. Oh. That should be all right. Apologies. <laughs> loud and clear. First of all, how are you doing? Uh, I'm okay, thank you. Yes, I'm just getting ready to go on tour tomorrow. Yes. Uh, it's long overdue. It's been since late 2019 was the last sort of full tour I did. Uh, yes. So it's very exciting. Well, uh, before we get into that, my first question uh, for you, of course, is uh, how did this uh, path of music in your career all get started? Uh, well, originally I did classical guitar uh, while I was still at school. Um, did that for a good few years, about five years, really. Got all my grades and all that, my classical grades. Uh, and then as soon as I left school, I just wanted to be in a band. Uh, so I was in various bands for a few years again um, until I found uh, Mr. David Ryder Prangley and we formed uh, Rachel Stamp and the rest was history. The rest is history. And still is. Yeah, was and still is. Yes. I was a bit of a latecomer to Rachel uh, Stamp, I apologise, but uh, I thought yeah. it's quite it's quite a really good um, band to listen to, uh, so I've added a couple of songs on Highest, but I was listening to it and I was like, you know what, this was, this was def I don't, I go back and I go like, I wish I listened to these when I was younger. That's you know? all right, you know, that's the good thing about music, it's, you know, when it's good, it's timeless, so. I know, it's a but. time ago, you know. <laughs> it would have felt good. To, it would have felt good to listen to it on the CD player or the cassette tape on the Walkman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Rachel Stamp, uh, talk about that as well. Uh, well, we, as I said, uh, I'd been in a few bands for a few years, but when I found David, that was this was kind of the first band that was really solid and I was really into, uh, and we, we really clicked as a kind of songwriting duo, I guess. Um, and we did a few gigs with different people in the band. Um, and I think we did about six gigs and then we got signed to Warner Brothers kind of mid nineties. Um, and we recorded an album for them. Uh, then the guy that signed us did the classic thing of leaving before the album came out. Um, so we were in a bit of trouble there. Uh, then we got dropped. Uh, then we managed to release it on loads of B-sides that we put out of, of singles uh, that we put out after that. Uh, so that album did kind of come out in the end, which is good. It wasn't a waste. Um, and then we carried on playing loads of gigs, touring up and down the country, went to America, a bit of Europe, um, and did two albums. And we still kind of play all that stuff today when we play live, you know. So, and, and luckily there's, there's like a lot of people that still remember and really love the band. And uh, we played the garage a couple of weeks ago and uh, it, it was just an amazing atmosphere, you know. So um, I think we're going to be doing some more, but I don't want to sort of talk about that too much in case it doesn't happen. It's not um, completely jinx set in stone yet. Exactly, yeah. So I shouldn't have even said that, but you know, this is this is the plan. So yeah, but it must be nice, you know, doing all this uh, all then and now, all this touring and visiting a lot of countries. Obviously, it's a work schedule and everything, and until the the performance of the evenings, but there must have been some places when you toured that really stood out and took your breath away and just felt this is good right now. Absolutely. I mean, that still happens to this day. You know, if you go to a new town, 
you know that's completely foreign to you um you still get that i still get that uh kind of rush you know and i remember the first time i got that was um actually when rachel stan played in stockholm um i remember waking up the day after we'd played and just walking around so it's such a beautiful city you know and uh, walking around thinking wow i just played a gig and this is just an amazing place to be and I think I'd kind of just given up drinking at that point. So I was really happy that I didn't have a hangover. And um, yeah, it's, it's just really cool to appreciate um, traveling and, you know, different, uh, different cities, really. Mm. That's very cool. Well, speaking of that, you've got, you're going to be starting the uh, tour tomorrow. Uh, please go into a little bit more detail of that, of what's happening, please. Um, I think we've got about 17 or 18 dates. All It's just all UK uh, and Scotland. Um, doing a couple of gigs in Scotland. That's UK as well, isn't it? So um, so that'll be over the next three and a half weeks. Uh, we've, we've already done a couple of gigs on the tour. Uh, we did the Roundhouse in London, which was great. Uh, probably one of the best gigs I've done with Adam in London, I think. Um, and we did South End as well as a little sort of uh, warm up. Um, so we're ready. We're really ready to go now. You know, we're like a wound up spring. <laughs> I'll be at through. one of them. I'll be at the St. Oh, David's in Wales. Oh, excellent. Right. Yeah. That was really great last time. Um, I think it's a seated venue, but a lot of people just insisted on dancing and, uh, the security kind of gave up <laughs> with, yeah. with the regulations of sitting down, I think. So that was good. That'll be good this yes. time as well. I'm sure. I'll be, I'll be there to happily watch another performance cool yeah it's, but, it's a really good set list so um yeah uh, but very, i very really varied. sorry no i'm just saying it's very varied because he's obviously had a lot of different sort of um eras and sounds all through his career and but this is like this set is just particularly uh eclectic uh even for his for ant music you know <laughs> Mm, of course. I mean, obviously, you know, people expect to play the hits and everything, but I think it's very important for songwriters and musicians to play songs that they feel great with as well, not just appealing to the masses. You've got to sing from the heart, you know. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I mean, a lot of some of my favourite bands, which include Adam and the Ants, um, uh, my favourite tracks are often, you know, kind of B-sides or, or album tracks, you know, so... It's always exciting when you go and see a band and they play those kind of like uh, less well-known songs. Yeah, mine's Hoist the Jolly Roger. Okay, well, I can't promise that. but um, Nah, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. But we're doing, we are doing some stuff off, uh, off Kings of the World Frontier. Yeah, so that'll be good. Yeah. But, but yeah, uh, at, when I saw you guys perform at the uh, festival, uh, Let's Rock Festival in Newport, um uh, obviously, there was a lot of acts there, but the but the performance, you know, the two drummers and of course yourself and Adam and everything. I just thought, but I was see, but I've got to tell a little tr truth here. That picture, my wife took that picture. Oh, okay. Yeah, because she's got a better phone than I have. <laughs> but right. she took that, she took that picture, and um, oh, she that that really made her Sunday. She was well, she was she was like you know, oh that's really nice, and I was like, you took it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it was a great shot. So uh, tell her well yeah. done. <laughs> yeah, but also other than the touring musician, you also do a bit of production and writing as well. Uh, can you talk about that? Uh, yeah, well, as far as writing goes, I mean, I um, I've been doing my solo stuff for about god about 10 years now really yeah released about eight albums um and that's uh, that goes under the name scant regard uh, yes. and i just i just produce that and write it and mix it and everything i even mastered the new the new ep which just came out yesterday um Ooh, and lovely. um so i do a lot of writing with for that um i have a band called she made me do it uh, with shahina dax also from uh, rachel stamp uh and joe who plays in in Adam's band as well. He's on drums um, and we do a lot of gigs and we're always writing new stuff. Um, we've been lucky because we've been, um, we've been able to carry on right over the lockdown period. We were, we were doing loads of stuff. We even did, we even traveled to Manchester right in the middle. Um, I can talk about that now. I probably won't get arrested now. Uh, <laughs> and we, we did a whole kind of studio uh, stream thing. Uh, so yeah, um, those are my sort of main sort of songwriting 
outputs but i'm always up for collaborating with people um uh, as far as playing you know playing guitar production or songwriting really yeah has there been any like uh people that you kind of wished or dreamed for or unexpectedly surprisingly collaborated with and the the chemistry was just there and this went pinch me i'm dreaming um collaborate as what do you mean songwriting or uh, uh songwriting or just you know playing music for them uh, both both types of uh, yeah, question I, well that's that's happened quite a few times because luckily i've been able to work with people that i was already really into like adam you know i was that was the first band i ever saw was adam and the ants um so that's always a pinch me moment <laughs> like, especially when we haven't done anything for a you know a year or something and then we go on tour and i'm like jesus this is adam's right there you know and i'm playing the songs and it's great, yeah. Uh, so I still get that with him. I've had that with other people as well. Um, there's a director called Tom DiCillo who did a film. He actually did Brad Pitt's first film uh, called Johnny Suede. Um, and I've done a lot of stuff with him, a lot of guitar work for him. He's put out an album under the Black and Blue Orchestra name. Um, that's another hero of mine, you know. And uh, uh, years ago, I worked with uh, John Napolitano of concrete blonde another of my favorite bands uh and i did an album with her a lot of that was done kind of remotely um you know me recording stuff over here because she's based in la and uh sending stuff over but um yeah so it's happened a few times really yeah i've got like bruises from all the pinches yeah yeah also uh I, the photos um i saw and everything i was quite fascinated uh by the guitar you were playing you know, it's quite a very un unique but uh, interesting looking uh, guitar. Can we talk about that? Uh, the pickups and mean... oh, okay. Which you probably mean the Tysco. You probably hang on. Do you mean oh, I'm stuck? Oh, I've got two of them here. Do you mean this one? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, that one. That one caught my yeah. eye. This is actually a Japanese guitar. Is it a Japanese? Um, design and they made them in the 60s but this is a 90s this is I was kind of vintage already you know even though it's a reissue um and i have a red one as well which i just got stuck on moving it to over but um yeah this is um a lot of my scant regard solo stuff is quite sort of surf surf guitar centric i guess and it's kind of twangy and this guitar works really well for that stuff um, yeah also i i use a dipinto which i'm using on the adams tour it's not here right now, but um, that's very surfy kind of sound as well. So, um, yeah, and this this is this is just uh, I just when I first saw one of these, a photo, I just thought this is that's my guitar, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's got uh, a very you know like uh, uh, like I said, a very aesthetic look and everything. And a lot of yeah. um, musicians and guitarists kind of sometimes have their own aesthetic uh, guitar look. I mean, like Keith yeah. Richards with the Caster or. The late great Eddie Van Halen with his Frankenstrat and everything, you know. It, it's, yeah. I mean, obviously any guitar is pretty good to, you know, play live or anything. But it's always nice to have sort of like your own niche, if you know what I mean. I think so. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah. I kind of almost uh, shoot myself in the foot by just wanting to have something that looks a bit different, you know. Because sometimes, sometimes I'll pick up someone else's Les Paul and I'll play that and I'll think, ah. You know, maybe I should have a Les Paul. You know, it's such a common guitar, but there's a reason why it's a common guitar, you know. But um, yeah. I think I've got so many different kinds of guitars that I kind of, kind of cover a lot of, um, I can cover a lot of different styles and sounds. So um, I'm quite happy with my uh, weird collection. <laughs> What's the roughly estimated number of how many you've got? <laughs> oh, oh, it's not, um, it's not ridiculous. Probably, I think I've got about 10 or 11, 12 maybe guitar that's cool some of they're kind of all around the world like one of them's in la because i do a lot of gigs out there um one of them's in scotland for some reason um yeah but yeah about that not, not crazy you, know. <laughs> you mentioned gigs in la did you ever play the strip i have played i've played uh the whiskey with a singer called liven that was about 10 years ago now um Sure, I've played. Oh, I think we played with Rachel Stamp actually. Oh, uh, we did. We did the um, what's that other one? It's not on the strip, but near there. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. Anyway, um, Gazaris. Sure. 
Oh, and actually, we did play there, but but it was called the Key Club. Oh yeah. Um, they changed the name. I don't even think it's there anymore. But um, don't look for it. Uh, and uh, yeah, we played the Key Club with Rachel Stamp. That was we did a whole tour with a band called Pig Face. Um, it's sort of like industrial super group. And also Dope, Dope were on the bill. Um, oh, Dope, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And we, yeah, and we played the Key Club. Yeah, so that we have played for Zaris, but not mm. in the 80s, you know, not with um, that guy with all the oh. uh, lingerie chicks around him. Mm. Whatever his um, name was. Well, I, I can't it's remember. <laughs> it probably was called Gazari, actually, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. No, it's just, that was a good name. Um, and then there was another place, was it the Rainbow? Or is that just a restaurant and bar, right? It's Yeah, I don't, I've never played there. I've been there a few times. Um, it's normally, yeah, it's just kind of, I don't even, I'm not even sure they've got a stage in the Rainbow. Never seen one, never seen a band play there. Mm. Unfortunately, I've never yeah. been to Los Angeles. <laughs> uh, okay, well, it'll yeah. blow your mind, I'm sure. There's still plenty of stuff that's crazy going on there, you know, and... Um, even though, I mean, the Sunset Strip's not really what it used to be, you know, even sort of 20 years ago or something. But, um, yeah, no, you should you should definitely, I'm sure you'll make it out there and, and mm. you'll, you'll go then. Some, <laughs> someday, I'm, I'm hopeful. Um, but, uh, yeah, and you said one's in Scotland. What's one of the best venues you ever played in Scotland? Uh, we used to play a venue called the Cat House in, Edin uh, in Glasgow, I mean. Sorry, not Edinburgh. It's a very massive mistake I made there. Um, yeah, the Cat House was amazing. It was like, it's kind of like, do you know Rock City in Nottingham? Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, it's kind of like their version of Rock City. So there was always like a crazy club afterwards with um, everyone going mental. And um, yeah, that was always really cool. Really, uh, really great audiences. Up there. Just the further north you go, kind of the noisier people are, I think. You know? Definitely with Rachel Stamp gigs anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, you mentioned, obviously, um, your solo stuff as well. Um, can you talk about more of that, please? You know, uh, is there any more, you know, like you've just mentioned as well, but would you like to do a tour for your solo stuff as well? Yeah, I'd love to, because normally it's kind of just fitting it in between tours with other people, you know, so I don't normally have like a whole run of dates uh, and I've never had an agent or anything. I always just book it myself. So, um but I would love to do that, yeah. Um, I did a few gigs in Belgium a couple of years ago that was really good, like three in a row. Um, but yeah, definitely up for doing that because it's so easy to kind of travel around just with my guitar and, and just plug in. I don't even need an amp really to do that, those shows. So yeah, I'd love to do that. Uh, and would you just do it like full year? Would you ever do one of those like ac acoustic tours that uh, some musicians do? Uh, I don't... Yeah, I don't. I, I appreciate when people do that, but I don't. That's not really the kind of sound I'm going for with my solo stuff. It's kind of it's very electronic based um, with guitar over it. So I think I I don't think it would work acoustically. <laughs> Maybe I could go around and do covers or something and strum away, but I don't know about scant regard stuff. Hmm. And back to the first question. So obviously, you know, Rachel Stamp, Adamant, the solo stuff, everything. But when you were a kid really getting into music I think what uh, and you said Adam Amp was your first gig so what were kind of your influences uh, your uh, the bands you just wanted to be in or wanted to be like or have your own touch of your own style of music but it's like yeah I'm glad we're you know on par with this band or compared but even though it's nice not to be compared Oh, so, sorry. What was the question? What? Which? Sorry, I, I rambled there. <laughs> I rambled there. Basically, right. uh, back to question one. Basically, uh, as a child, who were sort of like your influences, your favourite bands, and then was like, I want to be in that band. Uh, it's weird because although I played guitar, I was into a lot of electronic music. Like I think Depeche Mode were like, uh, still even now they're like my favorite band really so that kind of stuff as i was growing up was very left a very big impression um and yeah like i said other than the ants was a big one as well a lot of stuff that came out after punk you know because i was a bit too young to sort of be aware of the pistols and all that but a lot of stuff that came out afterwards you know like billy idol and kind of the new wave scene i guess you call it um yeah it was very influential yeah and that obviously mm. involved a lot of um keyboards as well as guitars yeah 
yeah, the new wave era. It, it definitely, like you said, it was it was a new wave, you know, and lots of keyboards as well. Because I remember Howard Jones playing before you got, well, not before, just to fix it, and that had a lot of keyboards. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. No, he does it great live. It's um, Obviously, he's playing everything live, you know. And, um, yeah. But I don't, did he have a drummer? I think he had a drummer. Yeah, electronic. Um, sort of. Um, it yeah. was. A, it, I don't know what... I, it was like a drum machine and whacking it, but it, like I said, I, it's an instrument yeah. I'm not familiar with. Right, 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 yeah. Yeah, it sounded great, though, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, it did, it did. But, yeah, the new wave, obviously I didn't grow up, you know, unfortunately, you know, dad's fault. <laughs> but, you know, I, I read so much about it and, you know, about all these, like, you know, the post-punk new wave and everything. And sort of like, as you said, you grew up in that era and everything. So, um from from this to that, from this to that, and now here you are, you know, doing your own thing and everything. So music has been quite a mix. Yeah. It's never been one based, you know. It's never been like this genre, this genre. It's always been a nice eclectic mix and everything. Do you think that's important for musicians not to be like one based? If they want to like get into music, they should listen to everything. Absolutely, I think that's um, that's how you get your I don't know. That's how you get variation into what you're doing. You know, if you just listen to one kind of music, you're just going to, it's just very limiting because a lot of times, uh, particular genres of music, they will even use particular chords and particular melodies, you know? Um, so if you expand, you know, beyond that one genre, you can definitely uh, open yourself up to tons of other musical ideas, not, and not just the kind of style of music, uh, just the way, songs are written really you know hmm. has has there ever been a particular song that has ever influenced uh, your songwriting and everything like you've listened to that song and it's like i'm going to do something with this which will help me towards my creativity yeah definitely i think like as i said with my solo stuff it's very electronic based so it, i kind of take more rhythmical ideas from people um if i like uh say it's like a prince track or something i will literally find out what the bpm how the beats per minute are on that track and i'll i'll create you know a, a piece of music around that and turn it into a song you know so i think i do that more than that obviously you're going to be influenced without even sort of thinking about it right, as far as melodies and and chord changes go but um yeah it's that it's more likely to be kind of um a rhythmic thing with me, I think. And uh, obviously, when you're writing your own songs and uh, thing, has there ever been a lyric that has ever stood out to you? It's like when you wrote it, it was like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that that comes out of my mouth and comes out of my music. Has there ever been a lyric you wrote which really s s stood for its time? Um, I don't actually write that many lyrics with my stuff. There's very, it's, it's normally like just some kind of tagline that I'll write. Um, so it's not kind of my, um, my forte really. <laughs> I wouldn't Fair have enough. When I, I think I, I don't find it natural to write lyrics. I just kind of, and a lot of the times with, with, with my solo stuff, I'll write something and I'll sing it and I'll put it on the track and it just won't sound right because I don't, th I don't really think of myself as a singer either. Um, so it has to really be kind of special or just fit in perfectly for it to work. Um, and it doesn't matter how I change the lyrics, if, if the melody's wrong or if it's kind of my voice is in the wrong sort of area of the, of the scale or whatever. Um, it, it just, I just don't want to listen to it. Maybe other people would like it, but I, if I don't like it, I just scrap it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's quite hard to say. With, with She Made Me Do It, it's um, uh, Shahina writes all the lyrics pretty much. I help a little bit. but um, So, yeah, um, I'm not. it's not a natural thing for me to write lyrics, definitely. Your guitar does the talking. <laughs> yeah, man, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Oh, hello, I was just reading a comment here. What do you think about the Kate Bush song hitting number one again? <laughs> well, it's, it's a great song, isn't it? I mean, it's like it is, another, it is. Uh, we're talking about timeless music. That's a prime example, isn't it, really? Everything yeah. about it, you know, the production, the vocals, 
that she, you know, she's just amazing. You know, I would I wouldn't say that was my favorite song by her, but um, it's not it was, mine, uh, but I like it. Yeah, yeah, um, but yeah, it's a great, great, it's a good honor, you know. And it's, she won't, she probably won't even go on tour ever again. You know, that's the crazy thing. Mm. It spawned so many covers by uh, many bands and many singers as well. Like the placebo version is quite popular. I remember when that came out a while ago, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that kind of thing, it's kind of um, it's so um, part of her. You know, a song like that is just like mm. I can't imagine thinking to myself, "Oh, I'm going to cover that." You know, and um, unless you're going to do it completely differently, of course. You know. Um, it's one of those songs that's kind of so ingrained in the, the person that wrote it. It's very hard to cover, I would have thought. Mm. But it's nice that it's kind of introduced to a new generation of uh, listeners and everything. Mm. Oh, Especially. absolutely, yeah. Also, uh, obviously, you've done this for a long time, so um, releasing it, uh, releasing content now. Releasing content now on a YouTube platform, on a social media platform... Obviously, it is hard, rewarding work, but would you say it's a bit easier than it was, don't mind me saying this, back in the day? Um, well, yeah, obviously, you couldn't, I mean, you just couldn't, when, when I first started releasing stuff with Rachel Stamp and all that, there was no option, you know, you had to have a record label, you had to have distribution and all that. Uh, now, it's just completely turned on its head. Yeah, you don't, you don't need anything, really, um, to get to a certain point. Um, just need yourself, you know, and you can do it DIY easily, yeah. So it's changed immeasurably, I would have thought, yeah. I think it definitely helps the, um, you know, a lot of the uh, up-and-coming people or grassroots music machine, if, even if they're just filming themselves in their mm. garage and just doing some songs or anything, it's, uh, it's very helpful. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Uh, so obviously you've mentioned the UK, uh, the tour you're going on tomorrow. You've mentioned Scotland, Wales, things. Is there any venues that you have toured before, whether it's been with Adam or with your other projects that you know, like, oh, I'm excited to play there again, or is it just is it's all good? Uh, it's normally all good. You know, um, I'm excited to go back to Bath because that's such a beautiful city. Uh, yes, I haven't played there for a while. I've never played there with Adam before. We normally go to Bristol and around that area. Um, so that's the one that springs to mind, really. It's always nice to go to Brighton. That's a great venue, the Brighton Centre. Um, it's kind of almost, well, it's not like an arena, but it's kind of a small arena, you know, so it's, it's, it's good. And you, the people can stand at the front and all that, you know. Um, so I would say those two, yeah. And they both begin with B for some reason. Bath and Brighton. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like Bjorn and Benny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. So, uh, please uh, talk more about uh, Rachel Stamp, though, because, uh, like I said, I got uh, songs and anything. But um, Rachel Rachel Stamp, obviously, that's a very unique name as well. <laughs> where Where did that come from? Or was that all, you know, the idea? Well. Surprisingly enough, I actually just met the girl that Rachel Stamp was named after. After all these years of being in the band, um, she came to see us in London the other week, uh, and I met her. And for some reason, I didn't get a selfie, which is ridiculous. I should have said, "Let's do a selfie," and like, "This is Rachel Stamp," blah blah blah. But yeah, it was actually David's friend at school, um, a girl called Rachel Stamp, and yeah, I'd never met her before. She, I don't think she'd ever even seen the band. Um, but I, a funny thing she told me was she was literally um, I think she was in some yoga class or something and someone else in the class had a Rachel Stamp t-shirt on so she was like saying that's me you know and they, obviously they didn't believe her you know but it was like this this band was named after me you know? so um, but we used to make up all kinds of different sort of uh, reasons for the name you know I think at one point we said it was the dinner lady at school or something but that's the truth. It was uh, someone David went to school with in Wales. And also your, your next scant grand. Oh, I hope I said that right. Scant regard. Uh, yeah. Where did, where yeah. did that come from? Uh, what the name? Yeah. Um, 
I didn't go to any. I didn't go to school with anyone called Scant Regard. Um, <laughs> I just it was at a point. I started doing that at a point where I just didn't want to think about anything else. Um, and obviously, it's all as I said. It's all me that does it. It does everything. So I just thought it was quite appropriate. As Scant Regard basically means you don't you don't give up flying f. You know. Um, <laughs> I thought it was quite appropriate, and I, I just quite like the way the words kind of scan, you know, um, and they look good on a t-shirt, I guess, you know. So I like that. Yeah, that's, um, <laughs> yeah, that's where. Yeah, it just came from my head, really. But it is a kind of phrase that has, has been around, you know. I like that good old uh, blaster and a uh, skull and crossbones. You can't oh, go yeah. wrong. No, exactly. So that's, what else do you need? Yeah. I was trying to make out the designs because you all had the same t-shirts on when you uh, uh, played with Adam and everything. And I'm, I'm yeah. trying to make out what is it. And then I, I finally looked at it. I was like, oh, it's an ant with uh, the uh, Native American things. But I, I, I had to squint and really look as well. And I, and, yeah. and I had my other glasses on, my best ones, and I still couldn't make out what it was. But that's oh, what okay. I quite like, mystical. Just look like a white splodge or something on the t-shirts. <laughs> But kind of like, you know, a good white splodge. <laughs> it is a good white splodge, yeah. It's a great logo. Mm. Uh, it's, been, it's been around for a long time, that logo. So, yeah. But I like that. Oh, yeah, cheers. Maybe I'll do some yeah. more. I've only done one of these. <laughs> Hang on. Weird, weird question here. Does your What's cat that? like your guitar? What? Uh, he does. He likes me playing electric guitar. Oh, you do have one. Idea. Uh, but as soon as I start playing the acoustic guitar, he, he runs out of the room. So he hates acoustic guitars. He's not into uh, Simon and Garfunkel or anything like that. But yeah, he likes uh, my other guitars. That's a, random, right now, but... yeah, that's a random question. I didn't even know he had one, but yeah. Oh, yeah. hang on. Here's one here. I don't usually uh, read the comments when I'm doing this, but who is your favorite guitar player of all time? Okay. Ah, uh, um, that's really that's hard. That's really hard. Uh, I'll just say Nigel Tuffman because I can't think of anyone real. Great movie. Yeah, I'd rather watch him than a lot of guitar, a lot of other guitars. Yeah, I don't know. I love Brian Setzer. I was, I'll say Brian Setzer because oh, from Headcat, yeah. Uh, from the Stray Cats, yeah. He, he um. He's one of the only guitarists that I can literally stand and watch all, you know, I just, I'm transfixed when he plays, you know, so, mm. um, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And him and Slim Jim, they're just a really good, yeah. I like what they do. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Great band. Will you be around after the gig in Cambridge to meet fans? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Uh, you're amazing. At the Thank you. Oh, cool. Yeah, no, I'll be around in Cambridge. I like Cambridge, so it'd be nice to talk to people there. Yeah, that's another one I'm looking forward to, actually, yeah. <laughs> and that begins with a C. <laughs> begins with a C, yeah. Uh, didn't well, you know, I'm I'm looking forward to the gig you play it, coming back to Wales. The Newport uh, you know, festival is nice, but it's nice that, you know, you're going to be in the capital and everything, and uh, yeah. definitely check out the castle. That's what I recommend. Have a nice little walk around the castle. That's a good idea. I often think about doing that and never get round to it for some reason. I always end up in that chip alley. What's that that road with all the chip shops? Um, oh, it's called Char uh, Caroline Street, but right. we call it we call it Chippy Lane for kicks. That's so the one, you yeah. got the name right. We call it Chippy Lane, and yeah, yeah. Um, they do bat. They do. This is a there's there's a shop. There's one called Dorothy's. Uh, I like that one as well. But they do um, battered Scotch eggs. <laughs> Oh, blimey. Right. Okay. So you're getting batter, breadcrumbs, and the egg. And that's like, oh, oh God. No, that's like lard upon lard, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I need to go down the Chip Alley, definitely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, but Dorothy's, try the pie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's just my opinion. All right. Barry Island, someone's saying. Better chips in Barry Island. Mm. Oh, interesting. That's just a bus ride away from Cardiff, but it's like the typical seafront, you know. Um, oh, yeah. 
beaches, things and everything. Yeah. But uh, with all your career, actually, I'm asking as a, as a homeboy and everything, uh, with uh, your work and everyone's work, how many times have you played in Wales, roughly? Oh, well, with Rachel Stamp, we used to play there a lot. Um, I, I've probably played there about, God, 30 times, I would have thought, 25, 30 times over the years, yeah. I'd have thought. Yeah, different festivals, different... We used to play... Where did we play in Cardiff? Um, it was the Welsh Club. It was called the Welsh Club. I'm sure. Oh, Club you know Cwblebach. That? That's it, yeah, yeah. You've got to go that. Horrible, <laughs> horrible loading. It was like three floors on a... on a, What do you call it? Like a fire escape out the back. So yeah. You'd like, be traipsing up these three... Up this fire escape with your martial cap, you know nightmare but it was all right on the way back because it was down obviously you know just slide it down um but that was great no i remember the guy that worked there was really nice as well i can't remember his name but yeah that was good good times <coughs> yeah because a lot of old venues in wales have sort of gone but uh or, or they're like creating new venues to, to play as well but saint david's is a nice little uh, theater oh, yeah it's great last time yeah yeah and it's right and the good thing about it it's right opposite a cafe so you can get yourself a bacon butty if you want <laughs> okay <laughs> so you play with Zizou Sputnik in Cardiff yes I did play with Zizou Sputnik in Cardiff that was the first time I played with them actually yeah um I just came on at the end and did a couple of songs I remember that, that what, what venue was that William Sinner I can't remember it was like a rock club I remember that but yeah that was cool was it called no. Barfly? No, uh, I don't think so. It's, I think, I think the name. I think they changed venue, but they kept the name. It was like one of these ones where they moved the, the brand around. You know, Bogies. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it was Bogies actually. Yeah. Ah, yeah. yes, that is. Uh, yes, Bogies. That's well, it was Barfly, and that was kind of like a gig slash student bar, and then it right. turned into uh, a rock club known as uh, Bogies and everything. And yeah. uh, you go down the stairs, and then the stage would be, and then thing. Yeah, that 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 um, that used to be a, a local I went to, uh, you know, mm. and everything. But yeah, unfortunately, it's not there anymore. Oh, it's not. Okay, right. It's gone the way of the electric banana. Yeah, but uh, oh, it's... do I have a favourite guitar? Um, yeah, I have a blue Rickenbacker that I use. I've been using years and years decades and i always go back to that i'm going to be using it on this tour that's coming up tomorrow and i always go back to my taste as well my japanese beauty um so there's a couple yeah that are steadfast in their usefulness uh, that i go back to i can't wait to see that one live i i like that guitar <laughs> yeah yeah I'll do, well if i do a scant a scant regard gig in wales I'll, I'll definitely be on that yeah did you pick the colour yourself, or was that what it sort of uh, came as the blue? No, uh, no, that they, they come like that. Yeah, it's kind of metallic blue thing. Yeah. What was Prince like live? Um, well, the first time I saw Prince, I actually didn't enjoy it, which is kind of sacrilegious to say, but it was in the nineties. And he played Wembley Arena, and I was pretty near the front, actually, so I thought, this is going to be amazing, you know. Um, he came on, and literally, I didn't know one song. I did, and, and I'm not, like, I'm, I'm probably, I probably know more of his songs now. I kind of got into a lot of his stuff later on. <clears throat> but um, he didn't play any, I'm not just saying, oh, why didn't you play Little Red Corvette? I'm not, I'm not saying, you know, why didn't you play all the hits? But, you know, maybe do a couple of, even album tracks that people might have heard. You know, he literally played all his new stuff. I don't know if this was the point where he was, he changed his name or anything. But luckily, um, a long time after that, I saw him in LA at the Forum. Um, and he was phenomenal. Um, it was like the complete opposite. Uh, so that kind of made up for it. And then I saw him in London when he, I don't know if you remember, a few years ago, he, he was just, he came to London and he was just, going to venues and literally turning up at, you know, Coco in Camden and just going on stage and you would find out on the internet and you just get the bus down there and 
and go in and you see Prince, you know, that night after hearing about it that day. Um, and I saw him in King's Place, which is in King's Cross, just down the road from me. Uh, I saw him do that and he was amazing then as well. He had all, full, uh, all girls in the band, um, Third Eye Girl, the band was called. Um, and that was just full on. Like he did a cover of Play That Funky Music, White Boy. He did like Let's Go Crazy, All you know, everything I wanted to hear. So um, that made up for the really bad experience of seeing him at Wembley Arena in the 90s. <laughs> Hmm. I can understand, uh, you know, sometimes seeing a band you like or a singer you like the first time doesn't always fill expectations or it doesn't always go, you know, the way you expected. And maybe the second time or the third time might be better. I mean, I've had that with bands, which I've seen and I'm like, yeah, it was all right. But, you know, but then the second time you see them, you're like, whoa. So sometimes maybe that's needed. It's yeah. probably like... In it's probably like eating yeah. your favorite meal, but then you're just not in the mood for it. That's it. I think so. But then there's other times where I've, there's particular bands that I've been into for years and I go and see them live and it just never does it for me. You know, I just rather listen to the records. Um, so that can happen as well, you know, but with Prince, I think he was so, I don't know. He was obviously, well, he was obviously on one for doing his new stuff when I saw him that first time, you know. Maybe if I saw that same gig now, I'd be more impressed because I might know those songs better. You know? <laughs> hmm. But also, like you said, it's nice to play some B-sides or stuff that hasn't always yeah. hit the charts as, as well. And, um, you, know, you know, I would be happy to see if, like, if Adam was putting out a new album, uh, I would love to hear it from start to finish. Not or yeah. if you of Rachel Stamp or your own work as well, it's nice to hear the classics and the hits. But at the end of the day, they're trying to plug in the new stuff. You know these new times and everything. You know yeah. if you're going, if if you're just going to, if you just want all the classics, and you're a bit uh, moody about not hearing them, well, mm. they they want to, They've got to plug in a new album. It's it's work as well. You know. It's got to be introduced yeah. to new generation as well as to the current listening generation. So, you know, I wish people would be more understandable as that. Yeah, I'd like to hear all the classics, but I'm one of those people that was like, yeah, I'm glad to hear some new stuff as well. Yeah, absolutely. You have to be open-minded. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Any more questions there? Yeah, it's oh, there's a, there's, a, there's a lot. Of issues. I don't usually read them out the same. Oh, here's one. This is you probably get this all the time, but here we go. Which Adamant song do you enjoy playing the most? Oh, that's like asking what's your favourite chip or something. <laughs> yeah. Um, at the moment, uh, yeah, it change it varies. You know, a, lo a lot of the time it's some of the. Uh, I mean, most of the time it's a lot of the early stuff that I love playing. When when we did the first album live, Dirt Wears White Socks, that was just phenomenal to play. Every track on that. Um, but yeah, some of the early stuff and the B-sides, you know, um, I love playing Beat My Guest. I always love playing that. It's always loads of energy, great energy when we do that, which is a B-side. Um, and at the moment, I love playing This Thing, which is off the Evil Rock album, which is kind of a um, mid-80s album. Uh, and that's a really kind of uh, underrated album. Uh, and that track, I, I think... It was probably supposed to be a single because it is it's it is a single basically even although it wasn't you see what I mean it's one of those kind of songs that screams hit single you know uh, but it never was and we we've never played it I've never played it with Adam anyway um, and we're doing it on this new tour and I love playing that at the moment that's my favourite at the moment mm. Hell's Eight Acres would be great as well yeah I'd love to hear yeah. that that's a great track off that same. Uh this is a question I, uh, you know, I've kind of, now a lot of actors, they don't watch or their own stuff, you know, they've just done the experience, I think. But my question I, I do like to ask to musicians when I get the chance, is there any songs or songs from any project they've done they actually like to listen to for fun or do you just keep it for research and revision purposes? Uh, no, I actually, well, particularly with my solo stuff, I love listening to it. I just put it on. I'll put it on shuffle or whatever, you know. And um, I think actors are kind of... I don't believe actors when they say that, when they say they don't like looking at their own films. I just don't... Be, I, I can't believe that, because it's like, why... You know, there has to be... You ha There has to be 
an element of vanity to every person that performs, you know, and I think um, maybe it's possible that people aren't interested in uh, listening or watching themselves um, after they've recorded or filmed something, but I don't, I, I don't buy it. I'm not sold. Has there been a Rachel Stamp song that has been like, oh yeah, it, and you had, your headphones are in, you're, you're walking around London and it just pops on your playlist and you're like, huh. That's a good one. Uh, yeah, there's a few. And it's like, and because we, we haven't been playing that often, when we do play, it really brings it home, you know, how many, well, great songs there are that we did. So, um, yeah, there's, well, there's a song called My Sweet Rose that's, that always uh, makes my hair stand up on end, you know. Mm. Um, not literally, but, uh, and Black Cherry as well. That's like a kind of. Oh, Black Cherry, yeah. One, one of the favourite tracks uh that people you know that our fans like and everything so, i like the yeah. name as well black cherry <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah no it's good that's like full on that track that's, that's always good better than black currants <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah <laughs> quite have the same ring <laughs> yeah yeah uh okay uh you said uh adam ant was also your um first gig you ever saw uh and everything so is it kind of um, surreal that it was your first gig you ever saw and watched and now you're performing with him? Yeah, it is very, it is very surreal, um, especially, you know, like I said, if we haven't been playing for a few months and then we start again to be playing those songs with the guy that wrote them, um, you know, singing right next year is just like, yeah, it's amazing. It's uh, Surreal is a good word for it. Yeah, absolutely. We are playing It Doesn't Matter, yeah. But we're not playing Ligatage. I'd love to do Ligatage. It's a great song. And uh, just to wrap things up in a thing, uh, what is the uh, first uh, leg of the tour tomorrow, please? Uh, the first date is uh, we're playing Guildford, G Live in Guildford tomorrow night, Wednesday night. Uh, so get down on it. Yep, to anyone in Guildford or, or not far from Guildford or who's going to travel to Guildford, uh, get there. Yeah. And, to, and, uh, yeah. and to all my people in Wales, get yourselves down to the St. David's Hall. Absolutely. Looking forward to getting back over that seven bridge. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I've appreciated your time on here and thank you uh, for doing this. Uh, it's been great chatting to you and... Uh, you know, getting to know you better, but also, you know, knowing about yourself as well. And uh, I look forward to the uh, gig in St. David's in a couple of weeks. Excellent. Yeah, looking forward to it. I'll but, see you. Uh, Thanks for having me on. I will. I wish you well. Good luck with the tour and hope we, to have you again on soon. But for now, safest of travels and best of luck. Cheers. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Bye. Right. Yep, so that was another episode of the One Take Live cast. What a lovely guest we have on tonight. And to all the viewers out there, good evening and good night.